Good morning, team. It is Tuesday, November 3rd, and it is also election day. So I hope all of you plan to get out and vote if you haven't already. I'm Amy Kaur, and I'm live out of our East Lincoln Park office, and I'm joined by Kevin Van Eck, who is in the Goose Island office. Thank you for joining us. Grab your mug, and let's get ready for another episode of Coffee with Amy and Kevin. Hey, good morning, Amy. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. As usual, make sure you have your coffee and that it's full. Uh, thank you for joining. Today, we've got a great topic. You know, this week on It's All About Love, we're talking about exposure. And so this week, and specifically today, we're going to talk through exactly how you can create exposure and some different perspectives and different ways you can look at creating exposure. And we're going to start with the 33 Touch program. And so we have the 33 Touch program, and some of you may be familiar with this, whether you've read it in a book, whether you've been uh, to a class that we've taught on it, but the 33 Touch program really is about, at its most basic, touching everyone in your database 33 times a year. So now we've talked about how this can be intimidating, touching everyone in your database 33 times a year. If you remember back to yesterday when Amy shared about taking really the core of your database, and let's say it's the top 150 people, it really means touching those top 150 people 33 times. So why 33 times? It's because there is proven, uh, there is a proven track record, proven results, it's predictable. And yesterday we shared in the kickoff for week five, we shared about how if you are touching people 33 times, you can expect one referral for every six people that you're touching. So if you look at your database, when we did the math, and if you were to have 150 people in your database, you'd be able to see that based on that ratio, and again, the key is touching each one of them 33 times, you'd be able to see uh, the results in terms of 25 referrals out of that 150 person database. So let's talk a little bit about breaking it down and making this 33 touch concept doable because it does sound really overwhelming. So Kevin, if you can bring up the worksheet, we're just gonna kind of buzz through what is in your weekly packet. So what we've done is we've broken down these 33 touches and you'll see that on the very top, across the top, we've got each of the quarters for the entire year. So Q1 through Q4. And those are obviously broken down into three month increments. And in the first section, what we've laid out for you is the monthly direct mail program. This is going to be the first touch that you are going to put out there for whoever this designated group is. And keep in mind, we're using a sample number of 150. You might right now only be at 50 people. That is okay. The most important thing is to identify who are these people that you are going to be reaching out and touching 33 times throughout the year. And then your goal is to increase that number as the year progresses. So the first row is going to be your monthly direct mail. And as it happens, there's a box there for you to essentially keep track and note each month as this is happening. And when, at the end of the year, you'll have 12 direct mail pieces that have been uh, presented to these people that you're um, touch, reaching out to in the 33 touch program. So that's already 12 out of the 33 touches. The second section right underneath that is the monthly e-campaign. Again, this should be really easy. It's the monthly newsletter that automatically gets sent out to your CRM. But this group of 150 or whatever your number is should be included in that. So again, you can be tracking and literally just ticking off every month through the course or through the end of the year that's gonna have them receiving your monthly e-campaign. So those are kind of the baseline that we talked about yesterday. Those are sort of the two set it and forget it pieces that are really easy for you to get kind of on autopilot and not have to worry about. The second two or the two other pieces that are really important and might take some additional thought and you're gonna to have to take a look at are the, first of all, the four quarterly outreaches that you're going to be doing to this group. Again, whether it's 50 people or 150. What I want you to do is recognize what you're gonna be doing each quarter. And then in there, you're gonna be able to put in the number of people you're going to be hitting each quarter. So here's our suggestion. If you start out with 150 people in Q1, what I want you to set for your goal in Q2 is to increase your numbers by 10%. 
So if you're at 150 in Q1, I want you to be at 165 people for Q2, and then you'll continue on. It'll be 180 for Q3, et cetera. Your goal is to try and increase your database over time for your 33 touch program. And then the last five that you see at the bottom are the custom outreaches. What we'd like for you to do here is to actually be able to write what your plan is for each of these. One example that I threw in there is for Q1, March of Q1, what I would encourage is to send out a note card for St. Patrick's Day. You can do a custom or cute little note card that says, may the luck of the Irish be with you this St. Patrick's Day. And inside there, you can put in one or two $1 scratch offs. You can send them in the mail. And you can also say that if they win big money, they're gonna have to split 50% of it with you. But again, this is sort of a custom outreach that's different than a text or an email. So figure out what those five are going to be throughout the year. You can incorporate things like pop buys. You can incorporate small little gifts like uh, Rita Kearns during COVID who sent $6 puzzles out to her entire sphere. So figure out what those are ahead of time, pre-plan, so it makes it easier for you to execute once you have 2021 underway. Yeah, that's really great. That makes it so easy to track, Amy. I was really pulling for an accent, your leprechaun accent, if you could have on the luck of the Irish there. Um, but, but please utilize this in the packet. It will make it so much easier. So let's talk about uh, social media now. Let's talk about specifically the differences between uh, the different platforms within social media and how they can be best used. Because sometimes we're overwhelmed, not only by the number of platforms that are out there, but knowing what content to post where. And this is something you can Google and you can find out there, but we wanted to give a real uh, quick rundown on what each one of these platforms can be used for and how, can you, how you can use it effectively to create exposure for you, your brand, and being able to foster relationships and grow your business. So the first is Facebook. Now, most of us, I would say, are on Facebook. I would say this is probably the most widely used social media platform that all of us are on. And for Facebook, what it's great for is being able to tell stories. It's great for being able to share videos. It is great for being able to recognize others and tag them. Again, most people are on Facebook. So you have the ability to tag them and recognize them and create exposure for your brand beyond your own sphere. And so also with Facebook, we have different types of content in Content Hub and platform that you can also share. And this includes blogs, this includes other videos, this includes neighborhood information that you're able to post and share on Facebook. So Facebook, if we were to sum it up, it's a really good place to share uh, stories and be able to use words in a way that can compel others to understand your expertise, the success you're creating, and what your brand can do for them based on your market knowledge. Really great information, Kevin. And I agree with you. Facebook is definitely that platform where you can put a lot of information and use a lot of words. Uh, the other platform that we want to touch on is Instagram. This is actually for an audience that I think is less driven towards words and really wants to focus on the visual. So a lot of photography, short video, those are the things that you should be focusing on when you are using Instagram. The beauty of Instagram is it's fast and it's easy. We've got agent icon, which we talked about yesterday uh, on our Monday morning kickoff. In 30 seconds, you can download uh, 20 different uh, templates that you can use to be able to easily upload insta into Instagram. It's also a great platform for shorter videos. These are quick 20 second nuggets of things that you can put out there. So keep in mind the audience here is less lo is looking for less verbiage and more of what you're going to show them visually. It's a really easy one to use on the fly and to also be able to post too quickly. Yeah, definitely. And then we have LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn is known as the boring social media platform, but here's how you can use LinkedIn. LinkedIn can be used for you to leverage your expertise. So on LinkedIn, it's not like, you know, you really don't want to post your listings or about open houses necessarily. It's not a marketplace, but what it is, is a place where you have the ability to share your market knowledge. And what I mean by that is sharing stats, being able to link to our market reports, being able to post about what is happening, not only in the real estate market, but in the markets in general, be able to share something. Really, LinkedIn gives you the, the ability to share something to help educate others. 
And all that does is make others feel good about you, attracted to you because you're sharing something that helps them. So remember with LinkedIn, yes, it is a different type of social media platform, but you still have the ability to leverage what you know in being able to share and create exposure for your brand. Yes, really important. LinkedIn is very business oriented. Different than that, we wanted to touch on a fourth social media platform known as Pinterest. And I'm sure many of you have a Pinterest account. And this is a place where you can go and it is really almost a marketplace for anything that you want to do. If there's a new recipe that you're interested in, if you're on a new health kick, if you want to redo your bathroom, or if you're like me and Molly really wants to decorate her tween room, it's a place to get all sorts of ideas about things that you're interested in. And the reason why I like this social media platform is it gives you an opportunity to post things, but it also gives you an opportunity to see people in your sphere of influence, what do they have going on? What are they focusing on right now in their personal lives that you can kind of tap into and create a common bond or a common conversation? Like if you uh, followed me on Pinterest, you would see that I'm in the midst of wanting to redo my mudroom. And as I just mentioned, Molly is really hoping to be able to redo her room because I'm creating all of these vision boards with ideas and concepts of things that I want to create or do. So when we're always looking for ways to get in front of our sphere of influence and find out what they've got going on in their lives, I find that Pinterest is such an easy way to kind of dial into what they've got going on. So make sure to have your account, you can follow others, and then you can create boards, but you can also see the boards that they're creating. So it's a fun way to, you know, kind of do something different, but also really be able to connect with others. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, right, is being able to connect with others on all these social media platforms. Each one is a little bit different, but let's go back and remember that with our social media, it should be a pull versus push scenario, meaning we should be able to attract people to us. So that means what we put out there is actually helpful, relevant, educational, whatever it might be, and that we use what we see on social media to be able to connect with others, meaning whether it's on LinkedIn and recognizing people's professional accomplishments and achievements, whether it's on uh, Pinterest and seeing the projects they're working on, reaching out with that as content uh, as a way to start a conversation. So let's go now into content and specifically using our listings as content. So one of the things that we talk about and we have talked about is this perspective. There's two ways to look at how we use our listings as content. And specifically, whether we do videos, whether we uh, do more photos, floor plan, the Real Vision 3D tour, whatever it might be, a lot of times what we do is we take a short term view. And what that means is we look at the cost in what we would pay in order to get some of these materials and collateral. And we say, ah, I don't need that to sell the home or ah, the seller doesn't care about that. That's the short term view. We look at the cost as opposed to looking at it as an investment. So the long term view that many of us do have is understanding that each one of these pieces of content, whether it's a video, whether it's the floor plan, whether it's the real vision, it raises the bar not only for the seller you're working with there, it raises the bar for every consumer and elevates you in their eyes. This then becomes the content that you can share to show how you differentiate yourself from other brokers out in the marketplace. So look at it as a long-term investment. You never know, that video, that 3D tour, that could be the reason why you get your next listing, how you get your next piece of business, because you stand out in the eyes of the consumer and potential clients. I think it's so important, Kevin, and you touch on this so nicely. And what we talked about yesterday was when you're trying to create exposure for your brand, there's three things that you really want to weave in there. The first is creating brand success. And that is giving people the idea that others like working with you. And when you're, uh, you know, showing your listing success, whether it's that you just listed it or more importantly, got it sold, that's telling a success story about somebody working with you and that your brand is something they should align with. So that's developing that brand success. The second thing that it does and that you need to weave in there is transactional experience. Somebody wants to work with an individual or an agent who has shown success in not just listing properties, but selling properties. By using your listings as a way to create exposure for your brand and your business, you're going to show that transactional success. And then the last thing 
weaving in there is market knowledge. Well, no one's going to know and understand the market better than somebody who has just consistently listed three or four properties, gotten them under contract and closed them. So by using your listings and the transactions that you've got as a way to create exposure for yourself, you're going to weave in those three elements that help a consumer decide on whether or not they want to move forward and work with you. Yeah, that's really great. And I want to go back now before we wrap, I want to go back and talk about the worksheet that you shared with us. And Amy, when you were talking about increasing your database, I think you had said 10% uh, quarterly, increasing your database. And we talked about it yesterday in the kickoff. And Amy had a really good suggestion in terms of how to connect with others that we may not yet know, how to connect with others, especially in the current environment we're in. And one of the ways she suggested was meetup.com. And again, it's not a dating site. It's not, it could be, but it's not. Um, so I decided to take a look at it. And there literally is every possible type of interest group out there that you could join. Anything from Dungeons and Dragons to, I believe I read that there was a sexy book club to uh, there's no, uh, there's, there are ugly sweater parties going on virtually on meetup.com. So this is really interesting. One of the things we shared yesterday is everyone else that's joining these groups or these events, uh, and a majority of them are online, of course, everyone else is in the same boat that we are. So we shouldn't be shy or sheepish. If we want to increase our database, we have to put ourselves out there. And this is a safe way to be able to do it with common interests. Now, I'm not joining the Dungeons and Dragons group because I know nothing about Dungeons and Dragons. I may join the Ugly Sweater Party group though. So with that, don't be shy about checking out meetup.com. Again, everyone there is there to meet somebody else. Uh, and you'll, you're in the same boat as all of them are. They want to increase the number of people that they know for various reasons. And ultimately, remember that relationships are our goal. And it's back to what we talked about last week, which is being authentic. And when you are your true self and you align with causes or organizations that are important to you, you're going to naturally meet individuals that are like you. And they're going to be individuals that want to work with you because you have the same value system, the same belief system. So, you know, Meetup is a great resource to kind of peruse through and see if there's some groups uh, that are of interest. But also think about the organizations that are really important to you. You know, many of you out there, similar to me, are dog lovers. And many of you have been involved in PAWS or other adoption agencies uh, for your first friends. You know, that's an organization that, you know, when you join and you participate in it for a great cause and a great reason, you're naturally going to meet others that are like you. It may not result in, you know, somebody wanting to buy or sell tomorrow, but those relationships will grow and they will turn into an opportunity to increase your business. You know, the Greater Chicago Food Repository, you know, that's another amazing cause, especially right now at a time where many of us are at home and have have shelter and have enough food to eat. But as we're thinking about others and ways to get involved, again, being authentic and putting others before you is really going to turn it around at some point and create an opportunity for you to grow business. But it's all about being authentic, finding out what makes you tick, makes, you know, you interested, you know, kind of outside of real estate, what you want to get involved in every day. So Think about that, expand your reach, get a little uncomfortable. Sometimes it's a little scary, but I can guarantee you once you do, there are so many great opportunities to make great friends, but also to grow your business and increase your exposure. That's such great advice. You know, the giving back, it's, it's what you said, it's what Thad shared a couple of weeks ago. It's all about making it about someone else and not making it about you. And whatever it is, whether you consider it karma or what, you know, whatever you think is out there, uh, when you put positivity and energy and you put good vibes out, good vibes come back. And Amy, you shared, you know, I think it was uh, during 60 Days of Summer about how uh, when you give, you receive. And so it remains the same here. One of the best ways to grow your database, one of the best ways to connect and foster relationships is through giving. So ultimately, at the end of the day, what is this all about? It all comes down to what Amy just said, which is building relationships, fostering relationships. And we've, if we focus on the 33 touch plan, if we focus on social media and pulling versus pushing, meaning pulling people towards us and being attractive, if we focus on using our listings as content, uh, 
the one thing that's going to happen is that we are going to increase our exposure. And when we increase our exposure, it allows us to foster relationships and ultimately increase our income and our business. Thanks for joining us, guys. Make it a great rest of the week. And remember, love yourself, love others, and love what you do.